So tonight's original, with in-depth reporting on a topic we've been watching, let's talk about the American dream. A new series where we're looking at the promises that a lot of people think about when they think of the promise of America and whether or not those promises are actually happening for people. This week, it's about housing. Really, part of the definition of what the American dream is. Work hard, save money, then buy a house. Maybe have your family in that house. But that milestone is becoming more and more out of reach for a lot of us. First-time homebuyers made up the smallest percentage ever last year, only about 25%. So why is that happening? And more importantly, is it going to change? NBC News correspondent Sam Brock has the story. In housing markets all over the country, big and small, coastal and inland, there's a riddle that first-time homebuyers like Kevin Lederer of Orlando are trying to solve. When did your reality come crashing down on trying to buy a house? Uh, about two years ago when I started making offers and getting outbid nonstop. How do you navigate higher home prices, stiff competition, and now an uptick in interest rates all climbing in the last few years? Increasingly, the answer for millions is simple. You don't. Everyone has the hope of owning a house. Is this shattering that illusion for many families? Somewhat, yeah. Being a 31-year-old, uh, recently married, having our first child, you know, ha raising a family, like you want to have that American dream of, your, of having a home that you can build a family in. It's not as if Kevin, who works in private investigative services, and his wife Hayden, a 28-year-old wedding coordinator, haven't been trying. The new parents saved up for a down payment for years and collectively make just under $200,000 annually. Still, it's not enough. The typical first time home buyer, the share actually dropped to the lowest level we've ever recorded in our 41 year history of the report. We also saw that the age jumped to the highest we've ever seen before. To give you some better perspective, just over a quarter of homes sold between July of 2021 and the end of June 2022 were purchased by first time buyers. That's a dramatic drop from the historic benchmark of 40%. And the average age, normally around Kevin and Hayden's, is now up to 36. Housing experts say part of the problem can be traced to rent soaring along with inflation, sapping savings, as well as the fact that first-time homebuyers aren't facing an even playing field. First-time homebuyers, they do not have home equity to begin with. And we know that repeat buyers, they do have home equity. They already have a house. All of these factors have thrown a wrench in many plans, along with geography in Kevin's case. The top two states for new residents are Texas and Florida, and a flood of new people means more demand and higher prices. Before the pandemic, the same sort of houses that you were looking at, that you were unable to buy, how much would they have cost? 250, 275,000. Now, how much are they now? Close to 400,000. And the younger generation needs more help than ever to get a down payment. The latest National Association of Realtor numbers show more than a quarter are staying with friends or family to save for a down payment. And the majority are making sacrifices, cutting back on luxury goods, clothes, and entertainment to save up. But it's unclear if first-time homebuyers might catch a break in the market as mortgage rates have fluctuated. But industry experts are predicting 30-year fixed mortgages are expected to drop by the beginning of next year. That allows for more buying power. Also, we see less competition in the marketplace. So those bidding wars and the lines out the door to see one home and timed entries, those are really ideas of last year. A tidal wave of obstacles could finally show signs of turning. I would have thought I would have bought a house by now. I would have already invested into that. But the hope is that we can get the house that um, I think that my family and I deserve. And that is a glimmer of optimism for this couple and so many like them who just started their search at the wrong time. I want to bring in Sam Brock, who is live for us now. Sam, it's such um, interesting reporting here, and I think people might wonder, there's a lot of factors that go into this, right? Where people live, who they are. Are we seeing this kind of across the board among all first-time home buyers? this issue? Certainly when it comes to background and ethnicity, we're not how. The National Association of Realtors crunched the numbers and found that communities of color are absolutely disproportionately be impacted by these headwinds. And when you dig a little bit deeper, it's for different reasons. The African-American community, for example, almost one out of every two buyers in that community is doing so for the first time. So when you talk about who's being sidelined, African-Americans are over-indexing on not being able to access homes right now. Asian Americans is another example here. Many of them live in very high cost of living areas. Think Northern Virginia, the San Francisco Bay Area. So they also are being priced out. 
But the reality at the end of the day is that there is so much competition right now and so many different things that are pushing against the average person just to try to realize this dream that far too many people right now are living with their parents and trying to save enough money to even get the down payment to compete. But competition right now is tough. Talk more about that, right? Because you're talking about a couple of different things, some of which are intractable, which is for many people, um, I shouldn't say that, I don't want to generalize, sometimes it is an issue of generational wealth, right? Hand it down. If your parents owned a house and leave it to you or whatever, right? If you don't, if you have a family that can give you the money for the down payment, a lot of people don't have a family that can give money for a down payment, right? I mean, there's just, there's so many systemic issues that go into this. And then there's the competition factor, which I'm interested in hearing more about from you. 100%. So let's talk about the competition factor first. According to the National Association of Realtors, last spring, it was about 5.5 bids per home listing. Now, that has come down to about two or three. But when I was talking with Kevin and Hayden, they told me there was one house that was reasonably priced in Orlando. Everyone seemed to want it. There were more than 50 bids on one house. How are you supposed to compete in that environment unless you're an all-cash buyer and going well, that's way it. over asking? And to your point about generational wealth, yeah, exactly. If you have parents that can help you, or also, this is a key point too, home equity. If you already have a house, you have that nest egg that you can transport with you to, to bid on another house. That's a huge leg up. But if you don't, if you're just starting from scratch, with the rents the way they are right now, it's sapping people's savings. They don't have the money to compete. And that's why it is not an even playing field. Yeah, uh, it is not for the faint of heart when you're talking about things like waiving contingencies, waiving inspections, waiving financing, which a lot of buyers want to see or sellers for, for, um, for competitive bids. Sam Brock, it is a fascinating look at all of this. Thank you for kicking off our American Dream series for us here on NBC News Now. Appreciate it, pal. Thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Follow today's top stories and breaking news by downloading the NBC News app.